Look, Pav. Pav, stay. Ah. Hey, Pav loves. Welcome back to Pav Vlogs. Yay! <laughs> Today we wanted to talk to you about some tips we have on capturing that picture perfect moment of your dog for Instagram. As you know, we are on Instagram, which is a very visual platform. And if you didn't know, before we had Pavlov, we had no photography background. We really had our Instagrams ourselves were pretty trash. Uh, hey, speak for yourself. Your mind was pretty trash. <laughs> Um, but we really knew nothing about taking photos, um, editing photos, what to look for, and we learned a lot through trial and error. And since we really learned on the fly and have no formal training, we wanted to share with you all some of the things that we keep in consideration when we go and take photos of Pat. Yay! So we hope this video is helpful, and now we're gonna start the video. Oh my god, why are you guys matching? That's weird. Are you matching? <laughs> We're basically triplets. Three peas in a pod. Dude, what the heck? What are you doing? Did you... <laughs> I don't know what's going on. See what it looks like when you do it? It's, it's kind of weird. weird. Hey Pavlovs, so today we are going out and um, making some content for Pavlov. I saw Pavlov put on his denim jacket, so I put on my denim jacket, <laughs> and then Pav Dad put on his denim jacket. Wow, but I would like to say Pav. that I was second. Hey, Come on Pav, you? it's okay, it's okay, go, go both. I'm on the other side, I don't know, I Um, so we actually went downtown to Santa Barbara to get some shots of Pavlov so we can show you a little bit about our process and what that looks like. But before we even get on to traveling downtown and driving down there and getting started, um, the first thing you want to do is... Is be really intentional about what you do. Um, before, we used to kind of just be like, oh, we need a picture of Pavlov, point, shoot. Or... Put them in front of flowers, shoot. Point, Walls. Yeah, yeah. Pretty, pretty boring this stuff. This is a cool wall, let's put them in front of it, point and shoot. What we started to really do is to be intentional about, okay, today we're gonna go out and create content. Another thing that we like to consider is if it matches our aesthetic. The aesthetic is something that you really have to consider and you wanna make sure that it's clean and consistent with the aesthetic that you're trying to go for. Um, so for us, we like to minimize the amount of clutter in the image. And so we used to think that this just means like white walls or just like kind of blank backgrounds. Um, but it really is just having minimal distractions in terms of people, minimal distractions in terms of figuring out what the focus of the picture is. Keep it clean. Keep it clean. So this could be white walls or white buildings or gray or even the sky. The sky is a really great use of minimal space. A lot of white walls, there's not a lot of traffic. The cars are coming by, but they're hardly noticeable. And so we were able to actually just put the pad here without very many distractions. People aren't really walking by. And uh, just boom, 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 take a quick shot. Our aesthetic might be different than your aesthetic. And um, it's really important that you consider um, the content that you would like to create and the considerations around that. We've actually never even taken a photo here, even though we've been by here many, many times. <laughs> so. As you can see, there's already some people out there trying to take a photo here. I'm gonna wait for some people to get off the stairs so we yeah. can take our cool photo, right, Pat? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think we could go on the left. Number two is also be prepared. Keeping in consideration what you need in order to capture the shots that you want, not just, I'm gonna go out and shoot. You have to be very thoughtful about which equipment you're gonna need and how that's gonna help you capture the shot that you want. I can't say that enough because there have been so many times where I realized I want to go shoot and my camera is dead so that takes a few hours to charge or another thing that's happened is I go out and shoot I'm ready I'm prepared and then my memory card is full so our pixel is our camera phone that we use just in case um, we want to get different angles in case our battery dies and our camera is not functioning properly we have a backup camera that we can take this so other things to consider are other lenses you might have. So I have a 35 millimeter lens just in case I want to do more portraiture. Another thing is bringing um, the 
proper leash. So Pavlov is usually on a harness because he has a sore back sometimes, so we like to do the harness for more support. So when we take photos, we use a slip knot leash so that just goes over his head pretty quickly and you can take it off pretty quickly, even faster than a collar. Um, so we recommend using that for any photography dog shots because it makes the process very easy to transition. Also a reminder to bring any props. So a cute hat for Pav or a cute jacket. So if you want to make a more variable shots and like making the photos a little different, remember to bring some props. So if you have ever tried to take a picture of a dog, you would understand how hard it is to actually take the picture of the dog. Wow. Good. Now look. Look, Pav. Pav's hey. day, ah. Even if you have the photography stuff down and mastered and you have the perfect kind of location and whatever, if you want to take a picture of the dog, you have to make sure that the dog is ready to take the photo. Yeet. <laughs> we actually have spent so much time training Pavlov. We recognize that if we want him to take pictures, we're gonna have to actually teach him how to do it. So the next thing that we do is like to put Pavlov or position Pavlov where um, we want him to take the photo. Um, essentially the posing part. And so sometimes it is having him sit and stare at us. Sometimes we want him to stand. Sometimes we want him to do like a freeze or sometimes- Or a smile. Smile, lay down, look in a different direction. Um, sometimes we put him on a staircase and he has to awkwardly be like face down, like coming down the stairs or we want him to turn around and we want to see his butt. And so we want to have him put him there but have him like looking over his back. So those are all things that we have to really position him in. He, we can't just say, hey Pavlov, go up the stairs and show us your ass. Uh, <laughs> yeah, photographing dogs can be much harder because although they have cues, they're not human, so they don't really take direction in a similar manner where they can like listen to you and understand. Mm -hmm. um, you do have to do some positioning and have them stay, and that's something that we've really um, reinforced over and over with treats and balls, mm -hmm. and that just honestly takes time. Yeah, so much of taking the perfect dog shot is actually the trainer and the, the human maybe not taking the photo, but at least the human who's managing the, the behavior. Yeah. Um, it is it's really um, a really synergistic type of uh, experience <laughs> to where the dog's posing working really hard and then also that the, the trainer is working really hard. Also, many times we want Pavlov to smile in the picture. And people always wonder, how do you get Pavlov to smile <laughs> in the picture? And I'm gonna give you the really big secret. He's tired. We tire him out. Um, so he's not necessarily smiling because we say smile, he's like breathing and he just looks really <laughs> cute when he breathes. Um, so ways we do that is we play fetch with him, we run him a little bit, yeah. and then he'll be smiling. Uh, and you can find me at the mall just running up and down trying to get Pavlov tired so that he can. <laughs> so it's important to know your dog's trigger words. And so we taught Pavlov the look at me command. And so whenever he's in a specific position, we want to make sure that he catches eye contact with me. And so this is really helpful. Look, Pav. Good. Go. We can say look at me with the finger over here and then Pavlov will kind of know that that's my command to look at the camera. Like, something that I forgot too is that um, in training them to stay, it's really um, really helpful to have a break word. And so when Pavlov is sitting there posing for a photo, he will stay there for the most part until we say touch. And when we say touch, he breaks from the position that he's at, comes and touches my hand and then he earns a treat. And that's really great because he knows that there's a start and end to the trick of staying as opposed to I'm going to sit here indefinitely and take a photo. That's really helpful for getting him to stay there for a long period of time but we say touch and then he'll come and then touch my hand. There are also some trigger words um, aside from maybe like a command. Pavlov doesn't like the sound. He also doesn't like the word ow. So if you go ow, he doesn't like that. So it'll get his attention. So those are little tricks that we have to get Pavlov's attention um, when we're taking the photo. Yeah. Um, last but not least, there's a very short window that you have in order to take that picture perfect shot. One, before you take your dog off leash and pose them, look for a perfect angle. So I go from down below, I go left, I go right, I figure out where I want to shoot and which angles I want before I even place Pavlov and get him off leash. 
So before we even start um, posing Palpov and keeping him somewhere still, we get ourselves ready and our camera ready and making sure we're set before we even take the photo. Be intentional, be quick, and be thoughtful are our last tips for you guys when shooting your dog. So we hope you guys enjoyed this video and used some of the tips that we explained and hope you can tag us in the photos that you take using our tips. Yeah, let us know um, what tips you thought were the most helpful in the comments below or if you have other helpful tips that you think um, other people would benefit from knowing. Um, also leave them in the comments below and we'll make sure to share them on our Instagram. Yeet! Yeet!